the Big Ten rivalry of the century, and that is especially true for those who grew up in the state. Growing up in Indiana is something that you always dream about playing in. The week leading up to the game, that's all the students want to talk about on campus is the Purdue game. And then when you run out to the floor, you know, it just seems like there's some electricity in the air. You know, it's the biggest thing in the state is the two IU Purdue games. And, and uh, everybody talks about it and it's something that you dream of playing in. So when you have the opportunity to be in something like this, uh, you know, you really treasure it and, and, and uh, try to give it all you have. In the Purdue-Indiana game, a lot of the kids are from the home state of Indiana. And, uh, you know, you know them from high school or AAU basketball or something like that. Off the court, we're all friends, I think, because we know each other quite well. But uh, on the court, you know, when they're wearing Purdue uniform, we're wearing the Indiana uniform. Uh, it's uh, definitely not a friendship there. It's a big rivalry. Joining me, Dick Vitale, is not just geography. That plays a big part. But also, these two always seem to be playing for big stakes. I'll tell you, Dave, very similar to that rivalry down at Tobacco Road, North Carolina Duke, where they dominate the ACC. Well, in the Big Ten, they've been dominated in the 90s by Indiana and Purdue. Purdue goes three consecutive years, 94, 95, and 96, winning the Big Ten championship. That's unbelievable what Gene Cady did. And then you think about Indiana's success, 91 and 93, they swept Purdue. They're trying to sweep them today. In 91 and 93, they won the Big Ten title. 92, they went to the Final Four. Both these teams have dominated and have been the class of the Big Ten. I can't wait for tonight. Indiana by 11 at Purdue. They go for the sweep coming up shortly. Let's send it back to you in the studio. All right, Dave. So it'll be Purdue and Indiana tipping it off in the bottom of the hour, about 18 minutes from, where, from right now. But plenty to attend to between now and then, Bob. I got a question for you. And the Hoosiers, Indiana going for this season's sweep. Chris Fowler, along with Vigor Phelps, will keep you posted on what's going on around the country tonight. But this is a big one, and like any one who has ties to the state of Indiana, you know how special this game is. But you also know that Purdue, besides having offensive problems, well-documented shooting woes, has another problem. Well, Gene Cady's always been known for his great defense, and for some reason this year, they cannot guard backcourts. Ohio State just swept Purdue. Michael Red got 50 points in both games. In game one, up at West Lafayette, take a look at Guyton and Wrecker, they combined for 45 points as Indiana jumped out 21-8. to eight. Gene Cady has got to stop Guyton and Wrecker if they got any chance of winning in Bloomington tonight. He better get his players to stop. Gene can't do much from the bench there, sitting, uh, you know, agonizing watching his guards. A.J. Guyton, will he get off? Will he have a big night? We'll get it to Dave Barnett and Dick Vitale for the tip-off, a special rivalry, Purdue and Indiana, when you come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by 1010-9000, America's directory assistance, and by the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. Here's another breakthrough from Craftsman. It's the clench wrench, available only from Sears. All jobs be set to get together as we kick off Super Tuesday. Since 1966-67, either or both Indiana and Purdue have finished at least third in the Big Ten. That's a streak that's in some jeopardy as they get together tonight at Assembly Hall. Welcome to Bloomington. Dave Barnett along with Dick Vitale. Indiana won at Mackey Arena where they had not won in six years, so they go for a sweep. Purdue just tries to split the series. Bigger for Purdue tonight, do you think? Well, I'll tell you, Dave, it's big for both clubs, but obviously with Purdue, you're looking at four and seven right now if they were to lose here today. And then they have two other games coming up in this series on the road in terms of their three-game swing. They got a road game with Illinois, a road game for Michigan State, and this is not a happy camper. We watched him in practice today. Gene Candy's not happy with the performance of his team. He was flat-out mad today. His lineup will include Carson Cunningham again, the sophomore transfer from Oregon State, has averaged 16 and a half points in his four starts. And for Indiana, Bob Knight dusting off Lynn Washington tonight. He had 11 points, 10 boards in the first meeting, has totaled 18 minutes in the four games since that first get-together. Knight, in fact, did not play Washington at all in the last two games. Hey, Dave, he told me today I had the good fortune to go to lunch with the general. He was entertaining, but he said, hey, I don't like doing this, but the other team dictates the starting lineup I use rather than me dictate the starting lineup by what we have. He said, I have to look at what they're going to start and then determine who I'm going to play. 
half controlled by the Boilermakers. Ed Hightower, Ted Hillary, Tom Rucker, the officials tonight. Brett McQuay, Alan Eldridge with an alley-oop for McQuay. And are we ever underway? Greg McWay right now leads the conference in field goal percentage, but hasn't had many attempts. In fact, the last game, he was one for four. They were blown out by that great backcourt of Ohio State. Red and Penn really put the hurt on Purdue, as Digger talked about earlier. 80-69 to complete a Buckeye sweep. Michael Lewis playing awfully well right now in the backcourt for Indiana. Washington whips it inside to Guyton. A.J. Guyton backs out. Now leans in past Cordell with a rebound off Wrecker with a foul. Eldridge pulling Wrecker out of bounds. Hey, Dave, yesterday at practice, A.J. Guyton didn't miss a shot. He must have knocked down 15 in a row. I was talking to Bob Hamill, who writes down here. We're sitting next to each other. He couldn't miss, didn't miss a shot. There's the diagonal pass, the little screen. They throw it up on top, and they get the layup. Eldridge, the first Boilermaker foul. A.J. Guyton, 21 points at Mackey Arena. He has really been playing well lately. Wrecker and Guyton had 45, as Digger said, but the guys that really hurt Purdue were Gladness and Washington. Wrecker inside of Eldridge to tie it in two. Nice move by Wrecker, showing that versatility he possesses. He's got to learn to be tougher and play on a defensive end with more consistency. Jerron Cornell, Boilermakers scoring leader, 15 points per game. He can shoot the three. Okay, Cunningham, and he steps inside of Guyton, hits a two. I'll tell you, Cunningham has really stepped up. You mentioned it earlier, averaging better than 16 points a game in his last four games where he's got four starting opportunities. Cunningham outstanding for Oregon State as a freshman. Almost won Pac-10 Fresh of the Year honors. Inside feed, Wrecker finds Lynn Washington. Good two-man play, Washington scores, but that's no-no defense. That's not typical Purdue defense. Off balance, miss. Cornell forced that one up off the back iron to Wrecker, and Indiana runs with a no-look feed to Guyton. He didn't miss. pull up three. He didn't miss yesterday, baby. He was on fire. I might have to call the fire to put out the fire. Burning those next down tonight, Dave. This guy, he's got that beautiful stroke. 44% three-pointers, Dick, for A.J. Guyton over his last seven games. A lob inside for Cardinal. Nice execution. Good look inside. Cardinal holds position well. Releases. He's one of my old Rambo men, Dave. Really plays hard. Been a little up and down this year. William Gladness. Threads that one past Cardinal. Washington missed it, but he tapped it back over to Gladness. And McQuay got a piece. Gladness lost his footing after coming up with a loose ball, and it's stripped by Alan Eldridge. On the fast break, McQuay second slam. I'll tell you, that's why you lead the league in field goal percentage. That's high percentage, baby. Get out of the break at the 45-degree angle. Good look by Eldridge. Guyton, another three-pointer. I'll tell you, Dave, he is continuing what he did here yesterday. He put flat on a shooting show, and you see it there. He's got that rainbow jumper. Nailed that big three to beat Penn State in overtime. Purdue again attacking inside with Cardinal. Two layups for Cardinal, two slams for McQuay, and it's 10-10. And hey, we're seeing Katie versus Knight. That usually means defense. Today, getting all kinds of open shots. Carson Cunningham in the matchup with Michael Lewis call for the foul second against the Boilers. There's a look at AJ. Look at him squaring his body. I mean, look at a great look. Squares his shoulders well. Gets the good arc. And it's stroke. Nothing but nylon. And jumping out of his seat, a big Indiana fan. Watch him at home. Ten years of age. Kyle Poole. Hey, Kyle. I know Dave and I sent you our best babies from Central Elementary School in Sullivan, Indiana. And he can tell you about every Hoosier player, Dave. Well, he would be a Michael Lewis fan, probably. Lewis hitting the first free throw, playing the best ball he's played this year, maybe the best stretch he's had as a Hoosier over the last six games. I think he should shoot the ball more. I was watching his stroke yesterday. Was a big-time scorer in high school, but he's passing well, running their offense exceptionally well lately. Bobby Knight had some time comments. Earlier this year, he was kind of down on Mike. Mike Robinson checking in for the Boilermakers, who have hit five of their first shots from the field, almost all have been inside. Also in Cameron Stevens, a sophomore from Fort Wayne. Stevens will give some rebound and he'll get some scoring out of Robinson. 
Robinson attacks another lay-in for Purdue. That's what they want out of him. They want point production out of Michael Robinson. He came in as an offensively skilled player out of high school out of Peoria, Illinois. Lewis rejection. Stevens off to Robinson, off to the races. Cunningham. They're four on two. It's Stevens. Hello. I mean, that's not Indiana basketball. He's going to get a T.O., baby. He can't be happy with that. No defensive transition. That's not Indiana basketball. Big change from the first meeting. This will be Greg McQuay called over the back of William Gladness. In the first meeting, Indiana raced to the early lead, 21-8. and Purdue really never recovered in an 11-point loss. January 16th, 87-76. They lead 14-11 here. 15-51 to go from Assembly Hall, where Purdue has been strong in... Just checked in. Well, they run a little curl move, get Washington in the lane. There's a little pump fake to free himself. Goes down the lane. They say he got him on the hand. Looked like all ball. Washington and Gladness between them in the first matchup at 25 points and 20 rebounds. But as you stated earlier, his minutes have really disappeared. Since that game, he's played, as you mentioned, a total of 18 minutes. Just a 55% free throw shooter. Also uncharacteristic of both teams. Not good at the line this year. Both well below 70%. Well, that's normally some area where they're really, really a way, way higher. Purdue started off so well this year. They jumped out 12 and 1, but a little deceiving. Eight of those games were played right at Mackey Arena. And then the toughness of the Big Ten. That's the toughest conference from top to bottom this year. They try the alley oop to Gary McQuay, and record read it pretty well, and Cunningham travels. Cunningham with the walk. You look at the backcourts now. Both backcourts do not do a great job defensively. And this year, the league in the Big Ten, other than Eschmeyer dominating inside, has been a league dominated by guard play. And in red at Ohio State, certainly Calderwood, and playing brilliantly with Short Mason for Wisconsin. Wrecker starts in on Eldridge, pulls up, misses, and it's rebounded by Washington. He's trying to earn some PT. He wants more minutes. That's the way to get it. Wrecker for three. Wide open. Just a simple little down screen. A little vertical screen made that happen. Part of the Indiana passing game. Screen when you're away from the basketball. Fifth lead change already. We've had three times. I learned so much basketball today. Just sitting, talking to the general, watching an exit and all. I mean, he's just unbelievable when he talks about the game. Ed Hightower assuring Coach Knight he didn't see, indeed, uh, see the shoot the second tonight. I'll tell you, they made sure they put three experienced Zebras on this game with certainly Hightower and Rucker and Hillary. Indiana by one. Number 15 coming in, trying to get above 500, though, in the hyper-competitive Big Ten, five and five coming in. Purdue four and five, eight. You never expect to see Purdue eight in conference play. A drive by Rucker, and they say he turned it over. No foul. Offensive foul. To call. Rucker going to try to go to the goal now. Usually Purdue rotates over and takes the charge. Let's see right here. Yeah, they did a job right there. Rucker up in the air. That's a no-no for you young kids. You don't want to leave your feet in that area. Defensive man easily has you set up for a charge. Indiana finally called for his first foul. More than five minutes gone in the game. Eldridge, nice horizontal screen across the lane by Cardinal. That is anticipated. Almost got there in time for the steal. Our clock down to 10. Mike Robinson has lost his starting shot. Missed it off balance. Washington having a good start on the glass. That was a big-time rebound by Washington. Record for three. That's part of the secondary phase in a running game. That's part of the secondary phase, Dave. The trailer. Record is the trailer. He has the ability to play inside-outside. You can invert him. Guyton called for the reach. Indiana now four for four beyond the arc. You're going to watch right now the trailer. Lewis knows the trailer's record coming from behind. That's the secondary phase in their transition game. There he is knocking down the trifecta. That shot has really revolutionized college basketball. The making of the three. For the better? Oh, yeah, I really think it's for the better. I don't like the distance. I've said from time to time I'd like to see it be moved back to the international distance of 20 feet, 6 inches. I think it's utilized just too often in the college game. And I don't blame the coaches for using it. 
Well, Purdue, not a good three-point shooting team, so they again try the low post, and Greg McQuay has six to lead the Boilermakers. Well, that junior college player is making an impact right here, getting inside. He was so effective earlier this year, and then he ran into a wall when he started competing in the Big Ten. That'll do it to anybody in the toughest in this league. Record trying another three-pointer. Stevens may have had a piece of it. It's the first three-point miss by Indiana. Well, the first time they were challenged on a three-point shot. Good perimeter three defense there. And one with another walk on McQuay. Instead, they get a three by Cardinal. I'll tell you, the Rambo guy knocks it down. Both clubs are really executing offensively, but the defense really has been subpar. Boilermakers regain a one-point lead. Guyton tries to get it back. He has three three-pointers. It's amazing. I'm sitting here in awe watching the way he's stroking the J, baby, because I watched him yesterday, and I was amazed. I did not remember him missing a shot yesterday in their workouts. I'm telling you, he was unbelievable. He had a couple of really cold stretches earlier in the season as Cardinal almost loses it. Now, Trent. Double dribble. Double dribble. I can even see that with one eye. I can see that from up here. And I'm further up with the referees. I can make that call and I'm blind. Yankee saw it too. He didn't argue a bit. Third for due turnover. You mentioned about Guyton really struggling earlier. I was talking to John Cheney, who I firmly believe belongs in the Hall of Fame for what he's done. Has a chance to win his 600th game this year. But when they played against Indiana, they got beat at the basic buzzer by Guyton. He had missed nine threes in a row before he hit that one. Hit the one they had to have. Is that too short? That's too short. Miss. Too short for him, Dave. He's out about 10 feet. See, with him, I'm going to let him penetrate a little lip be on it. Come out of the square and shoot the foot. Guyton's confidence really seemed to soar when he hit uh, the two big three-pointers late at Penn State about a week and a half ago. One to uh, force an overtime and one to win it. A double overtime for Indiana. Cardinal almost his second three-pointer. Staying on it on the offensive glass for now. Purdue a lot more active right now than they were according to Gene against Ohio State who really put the blitz on him not once but twice. Beat him at Schottenstein, 72-43. That hurt. Whew. That's a flat-out whipping. Lowest scoring game for Purdue, better than a decade that night. Cardinal traveling. He thought he was being fouled by Kurt Haston, the redshirt freshman who's just come in. Turned it over. Timeout. 11-13 to go. First half. Guyton and Indiana shooting their way to a two of 1975-76. Still the last perfect record team in college basketball. Well, 32-0. They hung that banner so proudly. Quinn Buckner was the star and the captain, our Mr. Buckner. And what else about that club unique for most Indiana clubs? That was the last team where every player in their starting lineup started every game. 32 games, the same five, all 32. Where are those days ever gone? Record misfires after hitting a pair of earlier three-pointers. This already, I believe, their 12th starting lineup tonight. Changes virtually game by game this year. Well, it's dictated by the other team. He doesn't have the personnel, he said, where I can just put a club out there, and I got my five best players like I did in previous years. Back clock down to 10. Tony Mayfield. Good ball handler Mayfield. Screen up on top, step away. Down to five. They don't cover Cardinal. He can make you pay from three meters up at this time. And Rob Turner has the board. Turner has really been playing well for them. It's almost like an extra guard. Haston tied up. And Purdue will get it. When Turner's on a four at six, three and a half, six, four, he's really a guard, even though he has forward skills. There's the good no-look pass inside. Hastings hesitated. And there's all ball. Good call by Tom Rucker. Another block by Greg McQuay, the Purdue shot blocking leader, with only 16. Not a big shot blocking team. Well, you know, is. Psychologically, Indiana coming in here on a high, beating Wisconsin. Purdue coming in on a low, getting blown out of hole by Ohio State. McQuay, a high riser from 10. Eight points for Greg McQuay. Purdue back even at 21. Well, McQuay, a junior college player, has done a solid job early in this game, getting good post position inside. Look at right now. Looks like a little triangle at two. Let's see if they'll stay with the guards. Gladness. Nice pass to Haston and a foul. They went to a zone. Looked a little bit like they were matching up with the guards up on top. 
but that zone left a lot inside. When you're not a normal zone team, and Purdue is a predominantly man-to-man -man team, it's really very difficult to get your players to adjust to the normal slides that that zone has to be. Kirk Haston, redshirt freshman, from Belleville, Tennessee. A 69% free throw shooter going for the three-point play. He's had some big games for them off the bench. A kid that really sitting out helped him tremendously as he got a chance to develop a little. And Greg McQuay can get it right back for Purdue as he's fouled by Haston. The one thing lacking with this Indiana team this year and the reason that they're really in the middle of the pack at 5-5 five and five in the Big Ten, they really lack post presence. They don't have good post play on the interior. They rely so much on the perimeter, and if the perimeter breaks down for them, they really struggle. We talked about good games Haston has had as McQuay completes the three-point play. His best by far against a terrific shot blocker. And Bill Prisbilla, 24 points, 13 boards. That night, they weren't lacking for the low post. Play. No, he really played well. And see, he's more or less a kid that can step out to the foul line and knock down that jump shot. And really not a guy that's going to lock up and be so effective in the low blocks. Purdue goes to Mayfield to try and slow down Guyton. I don't know if that's possible tonight. I'll tell you what, when he's at the top of his game, he's as good as any guard in America. When he is playing A.J. Guyton basketball with confidence, Cornell all the way through the lane, and Haston holds him off. Wrecker, long pass ahead to Turner. Foul by Mayfield. That's just, that's just poor basketball. That's just poor defensive transition basketball. That is not Purdue basketball. That's not how they won three consecutive Big Ten titles in 94, 95, and 96. And he told us that today. He said, we are not playing good fundamental basketball. And here's an example. Turner sneaks out in transition. Not only gets the layup, gets fouled to the line for the conversion of the three-point style the old way. First three points for Turner. Four-point lead for Indiana. Even in the years when they didn't win in 97 and 98, they were second in the Big Ten. Now they're sitting at four and six, and they have games coming up on the road in Illinois and on the road at the hottest team in America, who I would give today if I would give them my seeds at number one in the West, Michigan State. Michigan State at number four in the country in the latest to the ESPN coaches poll. Nine and one in the conference, 20 and four overall. Had this hit for the foul, his first. And both coaches today, Gene Candy and Bobby Knight, were telling me how they're really so impressed with the athleticism of that Michigan State club. And Morris Peterson's the best six man in America. Leading score for the number 14 in the country doesn't start. Think about that. Ooh. Top shot, Cunningham. Cunningham gave the way of Oregon State, came from the West, but always wanted to play in Indiana. It was an Indiana kid. If he got the chance at Purdue, he just jumped out. Haston jumps, hits just inside the three-pointer. See, that's what I was talking about earlier, Dave. He really steps away. A 6'10 player, he's more or less like a wing player. Haston on the other end, throwing a few elbows, and he connected with Greg McQuay, his second person. Look at Bobby Knight. Look at that. Hey, Bobby's doing a little dance for us. Look at Hastings right here. Now, McQuay trying to get position. There he is now fighting. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about the foul. I don't think there's any doubt about the foul. Might have been able to call one earlier on the hook by McQuay. Well, the day the uh, Oscar nominees were announced, McQuay making his bid maybe a little bit. He drifts outside, and Greg McQuay outside now. 13 of Purdue's 28 points. What a big time night. He wants to be a PT peer tonight. He's keeping him in the game here. But somebody better handle this guy. Guyton, two more. Nobody can handle him. It's an m and It's a mismatch right now. Because nobody can handle Mr. Guyton. Traveling. Is he putting a show on tonight? It's the A.J. Guyton Show here in Bloomington, Indiana. And they love it. All the Hoosier fans are going for that. But his average 23, he may be there by halftime tonight. I'll tell you, he's really been playing brilliantly in the last month of the season. And he's doing it all kinds of ways. Here he is now spinning, taking the ball up on a drive, shooting that medium-range jump shot off the glass. Now he's going to show you a little shake and bake move, get into the lane, spin again. And there he is with a great rotation from out of Peoria Central High School, from out of Illinois. And oh, is he been a star tonight. 13 points. Look at that. Three for three for three-point range. 
Even a game summary, both clubs really shooting the rock. 72% by the Boilermakers, not enough to lead. They trail by four despite six of six by McQuay, who has uh, Guyton matched. He also has 13. Yeah, McQuay says, look, you give it all that AT to Mr. Guyton. I'm six for six. Well, you know why? You're not leading on the board. So the winners go to score. Cardinals, trademark play to the deck to come up with a steal. Eldridge over Dane Firekins. Nice shot by Eldridge. Both clubs really focusing and concentrating on their execution offensively. There's a little zone right now. This time Cornell got a piece of the pass by Michael Lewis. They swing it over for a three-point try by Rob Turner. Gladness with the tip on the offensive glass. Nice play by Gladness to keep that alive. Good anticipation. What a courageous young man. Played with a bullet in the left side of his body. They can miss West Memphis, Arkansas. When they got shot down, he and his buddy on the way home after a basketball game. He said, I came from a tough, tough neighborhood. Record straight off, trying to bank a three. Fight again for Indiana as they tap an offensive rebound outside to restart the offense. And it's record rejected on the back door. Nice look inside. The good alert play by Purdue on the interior. Good solid interior defense. Three-pointer Cornell. That's what he can do. Come out of South Bend, Indiana. Played high school, led to the state championship. Hit a big three. And that win could really help them get a postseason berth to the big fans. When they were 18 down, came back and beat St. John's at Madison Square Garden. He hit the winner at the muzzle. Jerron Cornell, after hitting his first bucket, Call for his first foul. Purdue with that three-pointer by Cornell a moment ago. His 58th of the year. They've hit six consecutive shots to regain a one-point lead. Dave, you know teams right now that are in the danger zone, middle of the pack in their conference, becomes big, and you look for those certain big wins. Indiana's got a win over Utah, who's as hot as anybody in the nation, winning 13 in a row. And if I were to cast the ballot for player of the year, I would cast it for Andre Miller. He's been multi-dimensional and super for Rick Majerus. And they also have a win over Temple on the side of Purdue. They got that win over St. John's that could really help them in the RPI ratings. Five hits the front end. Uh, for those of you experiencing audio problems, we apologize. We are working to get them fixed. Dane Fife has started nine times this freshman year. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. Hits them both. His dad and his brother were Michigan Wolverine players. Fife is a kid that hit a big three against Kentucky to send that game overtime. And Kentucky won it in overtime. Scott Padgett was brilliant in the OT. They've been struggling, lost two in a row, Kentucky. Yeah, that's happened. They had that great road streak in the SEC end at Florida. They haven't picked it back up since. Lost to Florida and lost to Alabama. 11 lead changes in the first 14 minutes and change. This one has not been disappointing in the least. Indiana by one. Well, both clubs breaking down with any kind of ball movement, any kind of dribble penetration, defensively really breaking down. Not playing that great team help defense. Tom Rucker says the three-pointer by Cornell went over the top of the backboard out of bounds. I think at an Indiana club, we saw Scott May and Kent Benson a little bit earlier. You think of Quinn Buckner. That was one of the best teams I've ever seen assembled in 76. Rob Turner missed the three. Shooting too quickly. Not enough patience, not enough moving the basketball. Indiana basketball, they usually pass it three, four, five times. Bump you off screens. Same thing with Purdue. Early though, he hit five of their first six three quarters. Now they fell in love with it a little bit. Purdue really uh, bit by the trampling club tonight. There's another one. This one called on Philadelphia. They don't lose too often here in the General's House. I can tell you that. The only yell they have here thus far this year. They were whipped on a glass big time by Tom Izzo's club. And what a job he has done in his short tenure as head coach of Michigan State. National Coach of the Year last year. Started off four in the country this year. Started off slowly this year, recovered after that slow start. The team Cleves has gotten better and better. Look out, another three by Guyton. Cannot miss. That basket is like the Atlantic Ocean right now. I mean, it is like the Atlantic Ocean. He can't miss. It would like be taking Chris Fowler, give him the rock, stand him on the beach, and let him throw him in the ocean. No, he would not miss. No. Don't go too crazy. Cameron Stevens. <laughs> Who has four? I'm so shy. I'm so quiet. 
I'm so introverted. Right, and 16 first half points, four three. I'm not shocked after watching him yesterday in practice. This is just a repeat performance, only this time the lights are on. Turner all the way into a block by John Allison, little used, but per minute, maybe the best shot blocker in the country. I'll tell you, they like him. They think his development is something special once he gets stronger physically. Uh-oh, here we go. What a record Gene Kenny's had in the Big Ten. He's been amazing. In a decade in the 90s, they have won more than anyone. Indiana has matched its largest lead of the game thanks to the steal by Wrecker. 39-35 Hoosiers. He's been big here in Bloomington, and a guy that's been knocking him down is A.J. Guyton, but he gets a lot of help from his friends. Watch the screen. Freeze it right here see the screen here this is going to free him right here for that three watch it right now there it is the great screen by gladness gets guyton to get that great look i love the way he shoots the rainbow three guyton feeding larry richardson this time and it's the indiana six point lead their largest inside feed the cardinal foul by lewis this is a real dangerous time for purdue you're down six right now you got to really gut it up in the last three minutes, you don't want to go in in halftime with a big-time deficit after playing well early. See, now watch it. They're going to throw the ball inside. Got the ball in there kind of easy, and there's the contact. Richardson out of the Miami, Florida area. Hey, what about Miami? What a job Leonard Hamilton's done this season. They are definitely a top-20 team. I wish they would get some fan support. I think that's absolutely a disgrace that the fans don't come out in big numbers. Those kids deserve better, Johnny Hemsley. And those kids like Tim James, they get 3,000. They, they had one big crowd. And UConn, that, was right? UConn. that is a crime. They got a big building. They got an outstanding team. Come on down to Miami, support them. You can get an atmosphere like this. Wow. See, he never has the luxury, Leonard Hamilton, of having this kind of atmosphere to have a home court advantage. Nine for Cardinal. Three pointer. The arc by Guyton, who was four for four. Wow, we got a scoop. He missed one. He better play better on a defensive end. Bobby Knight has not been happy with his defense. Cunningham right now against Guyton. He's doing a good job screening and stepping away from the screen and getting open. Cameron Stevens pushed. Washington and Richardson had Stevens in the sandwich. I think they will get Barry Richardson here. Bobby well, Washington. Really Washington. excited about the future, Dave. Well, ESPN continues its weekly biographies of some of the century's greatest athletes Friday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Sports Century will present a 30-minute profile on the career life of hurdler Edwin Moses, who has been named the 47th greatest North American athlete by the Sports Century panel. And you can find out more about the century's greatest by logging on to ESPN.com. Go Network, go.com. That's really an interesting series. I've been lust, loving listening to Dan Patrick do that. I see the one he did with Chris Everett it was great. 245 and a half Indiana by four. Cunningham back in to guard Lewis. And a man defense got out of that zone. They're not a zone team. Their personality reflects their coach, and that's playing man to man defense. Washington travels. That time, Dick, they tried a bigger man, Mike Robinson, on guy, a five-inch height advantage. I was mentioning next year in the future, Bobby Knight's really excited about George Leach, a 6'10 and a half player who they got away from Maryland, actually, from down in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they got another big kid, about 6'9, Newton, coming from Atlanta. And he thinks they can become impact players here right away on their front court. And they return all these other guys, basically. With the exception of Gladness. Turner and uh, Gladys, the only two Indiana seniors. They turned it over for the third time. That's all. Last time down the floor, McCray finally misses. He missed his easiest shot. He had like a three-footer. Couldn't believe he was that wide open. He said, hey, I'm supposed to be a star. I'm not supposed to get open like this. His brother's getting a lot of playing time. Played a lot more last year. And a lot more Greg Vingari this year. Eldridge off on a three. Rebound Robinson pushed off. 
no doubt about it. Tom Rucker. No doubt about it. Look at him smiling. Thought he could get away with one. Thought he could win himself an SP. Look at Gene Kenny. He's smiling. He says, you can't get away with that, Michael. Watch this. Watch Michael right now. Hold it. Freeze it right here. Now watch this here. He's going to push right on the inside. We're going to watch a little push. Oh, no, no, it was the other guy. Oh, that was a push on Rutger. That's a turnover with the Telestrator. <laughs> Look at Gene Katie. So you're two for three. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take two for three, though. Rutger hits the front end. That's a silly foul, too. You put him on the line. The clock doesn't move. You're down five, going to six. Gene Katie trying to get the year tell Hillary. He says, hey, there's a great restaurant in town here called Puccini's. You want to join me tonight? And how do we say, are you serious? Let me stare back. I want a tee, Gino. One of two to keep it Indiana by five. We hit the two-minute mark in the first half of Assembly Hall. The back and forth half. 11 lead changes. That screen right there by Cardinal is wide open after the screen. And this follows him out to the top of the key. Nice back back cut uh, Robinson on the reverse. Mike Robinson has four off the bench. Normally through his career, a better big game player. The later he gets in the season, the better his numbers. A backdoor cut. You normally don't see those kind of cuts against Indiana. Offensive foul here on record. I mean, with simple backdoor cut, nobody rotates over. I mean, we're going to watch the little backdoor cut right here. Right here. Freeze him. See, right here. See, record taking a gamble, and now he goes backdoor. And no help. No help. I mean, it's unbelievable. That's not Indiana basketball. I mean, you got to see ball, you man, theory. Bobby I mean, Knight really started that with Al LaBalbo, a name that a lot of people don't know. A father of defense from out of New Jersey years ago. A man I respect so much. A great teacher of the game. Worked with Bobby at West Point as an assistant coach. Right now, his 28th year at Indiana. All-time winning Big Ten coach. He's produced shooting 68%, Dick. And this is for a tie, and Cunningham comes up short on a three. And he's shooting like that, and you're down three. Tells me you're not playing on the defensive end. There has been no defense for A.J. Guyton tonight. Record right behind him. Now they try and get some inside action going. Richardson travels. One minute mark of the first half coming up at halftime. We have the courtyard by Marriott halftime report. Chris and Digger in the studio. Previewing old myths and uh, number three Auburn, St. John's and West Virginia. A look in there. Digger will uh, wax philosophical on the Big Ten picture as a whole. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps coming up after the final minute of this first half with a 20-second timeout. I want to get out and see that Auburn team. I'll tell you, I've not seen them in person, but do they rebound like Terry's? You check their numbers. They get about 50 rebounds a game. Chris Porter is a sensational player got suspended they didn't miss a beat they beat georgia they beat mississippi state and alabama without them mac mccadney stepped in did an outstanding job as a freshman average 14 a game and that's that unbelievable run cliff ellis if you were voting coach of the year today it's a mismatch i mean it's unbelievable the job that guy has done and they are moving quickly to battle michigan state i believe for a number one seed in the west because stanford slipped big time that was a bad loss against connecticut without richard hamilton losing at maples pavilion skip pass and a nice leaping catch by alan eldridge 45 seconds 20 on the purdue shot clock as cardinal drives on Gladys. back alone for a three it's Cunningham to tie it at 42. I can't believe the wide open shots against Indiana for years when you thought of Indiana the first thing that you would think of other than the general Robert Montgomery night what was synonymous with Indiana was team defense and there is absolutely no concept here today of the defense that they are taught by the general little penetration he steps back where's his man I mean I could shoot that wide open trifecta are you kidding me he's wide open it's like Play the game of horse against nobody guarding. Carson Cunningham, just his sixth three-pointer of the year. And now they've decided it was a two. So keep it Indiana by one, 42-41. So difficult for our angle sitting up here up higher. But he stepped in that line according to the zebras, and they're closer than we are. If you take a look at the big picture here of Bloomington, where they've won so many games during the general's tenure and those national titles 
76, 81, and 87. 92 went to the Final Four. Had a great chance in 93 with the Calvert Cheney game, but Alan Henderson got hurt. Went to the Final Eight. Purdue wanted to walk on Luke Jimenez. Now his long three-quarter good with six seconds. I ask you, Dave, anybody guarding him? There was nobody guarding him. Eldridge with the runner almost got it. The end of the wow. first half. What a shooting display by both Purdue and Indiana. And it's 45-41. Indiana going for the regular season sweep of the Boilermakers. They're up by four as we send it to Chris Ziger in the studio, guys. All right, Dave, thank you. You said it before the game that this Purdue team has trouble guarding good guards from the other team. Is that great shooting or just poor defense by both teams? Combination of both. Of course, A.J. <laughs> Guyton's always on fire when he plays at home. But the thing is, Nothing is like this rivalry. You talk about North Carolina playing Duke when that becomes rivalry week. Nothing in the state of Indiana or in the Midwest is greater than a Purdue-Indiana rivalry. They come out of the box early. Indiana starts the game hitting four for four on threes. Purdue does the right thing, get points in the paint because they're not a good sh three-point shooting team. And look at this thing. We're in the 40s. There's no defense. It's going to be a great second half. Usually that kind of rivalry intensity translates to good defense and poor shooting. Now 49 at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. They're happy so far. Their Hoosiers are on top by four as we welcome you again. Dave Barnett, Big Vitalis. Good news, bad news for the Boilermakers. Good news. They're in this game. Three points on one of four shooting by their leading scorer, Jerron Cornell. The bad news is they are shooting 64% of they're not ahead. I mean, that tells you they're not playing on the defensive end. They had a great performance offensively, good execution, got a high percentage shots, and they certainly delivered. It was an A.J. Guyton show, though, that really sparked. I mean, he sparkled in that first half. Here he is moving without the basketball. Now, look at him, very active. They're trying to play him tough defensively. Comes off the screen. Gladness lays the screen, and he knows what to do with it. Once he gets it, he finalizes. What a big half. 16 big ones. Here's Cardinal penetrating right inside here. Freeze it. See, right in here. He gets into this lane, draws it, kicks it out. Nobody rotates out. Nobody rotates out on cutting up. Look at this. Wide open. Fortunately for Indiana, his foot was touching the line, and only was a deuce. For wide open shots, Dave. I want to go out there and play. I mean, that's my game. I had no D, but I could stand and <laughs> shoot the jump. Well, fit right in there. The best one-eyed ball-headed shooter in America. I challenge anybody my age to shoot the rock. Indiana <laughs> ahead because they have five more threes. They start the half with a turnover. Purdue forced only five turnovers in the first half. You and I talked about how these four minutes are so vital right out of the gate to Purdue. They can't afford it in the end to spurt and get this crowd to become electrical and get that lead and try to come from behind. Their defense is not forcing any turnovers for layup. They've only forced five in the first half turnovers. Cornell bounced down the baseline. McQuay now six of eight from the field. That's last by Jerron Cornell and out of bounds to Indiana. Well, Indiana trying to sweep Purdue. They did it twice in the 90s, 91 and 93. Both those years, they won the Big Ten title. Hey, you speak about winning a Big Ten title. I mean, that achievement of going three consecutive years by Gene Cady is sensational. 94, 95, 96. Glad this call for steps. He knows a little bit about winning, and he told you and I today at the shooter round how he is not happy with this club. He said, in 89, I got rid of five guys after the end of the year who didn't play Purdue kind of basketball in terms of hustle, scrap, and listen and do things the right way. He said, we may have wholesale changes this year. Things like that not making this uh, an enjoyable year so far for Gene Katie. He says the biggest lack on his roster right now, they are crying out for leadership. Yeah, no leadership. And it's one thing that he said they lack, as you mentioned. And you gotta have leadership, especially in this league, where every game is a battle. I mean, think about the bottom three teams are Penn State, Illinois, and Michigan. Guyton off the glass, 18 points. He's combining good perimeter play, the medium range jump shot, taking the ball to the goal. What is he not doing? The kid is playing brilliantly. That's how Andre Miller and Jason Terry have been playing all year. Oilers have turned it over their first two trips, but they are running it through Cornell much more than they did in the first half. Only four shot attempts for Cornell in the first half. Cardinal inside foul by William Glenn. They've done a great job. If you have to look at one area where they've excelled defensively is to really minimize the touches of Jermon Cornell. That's their basic option, number one for Purdue, and they've taken that away from the Boilermakers. 
What they didn't take away, though, the first half was the inside play. When this game started, it was dunk, layup, dunk, layup, almost at will for the Boilermakers. Gene said he's got a great kick coming in next year. Three position player, Kenny Lowe from out of Gary, Indiana. Gary produced so many great players. Probably the greatest, or one of the greatest, obviously, ever at Purdue, by the name of Glenn Robinson. They've had so many great ones over the years. Rick Mount, what have he, what would have he done with this three-point line? On an average 50 again. Wow. Keep care of this. Where has, the, where has the jump shooter gone? Guys like Calvin Murphy and Maravich and Mount. Everybody wants to be skywalkers, high rises, and shoot dunks. Well, then that makes this man a throwback, I guess. A.J. Guyton off the jump. He's floating. He's gliding. And he's stinging like a bee, baby. A little Muhammad Ali action right now. And one of the walk on Cunningham. Cornell drives into a double team, missed it with the left hand. Guyton with the rebound. He has 20 points for the sixth time in their last eight games. That was an impossible shot by Cornell. You talk about a four shot, not the kind of shot you want out of the leading scorer. Guyton, uh oh, uh oh, that's not. Yesterday. yesterday he didn't miss he must have went 15 in a row at one time too and, and I would be afraid that I left it all in the practice for that's what I said to the general I said are you a little worried he said I'd rather the kid go home feeling confident I mean that hole right now is like the Atlantic Ocean some guys it's like a little teacup this is the largest Indiana lead yet and mind you ready for this he was shut out against Syracuse when they lost I mean shut out he took the play. He took a Nolan Ryan fastball and got shut out. Hard to imagine. Yeah. Then he was blanked basically by Iowa. Hard no call for traveling. Ten Purdue turnovers. Most of them have been traveling. This can start to get away. Purdue needs a stop here and a score. They can't let this get, get the double figures right now. This crowd is ready to erupt. Gene Cady playing for a career advantage against Bob Knight. They're 19-19 head-to-head coming into this one. Guyton, again, finally misfired. I mean, he didn't get the roll. Out of bounds to Purdue. Well, you know, as Dicker said on a free show about the guards having big days against Purdue, and here's another example today. When you look at this league, I mean, Wisconsin, all right, they lost to Illinois 53-51, lost a tough game here, but now they play tomorrow. It could become the first time in Wisconsin history that they win 20 games since 1941. I mean, that was a diaper dandy at that time. And they got great guard play with Mason and Calderwood. They really hurt Purdue. Oilers looking for their first field goal of the second half. Their only points for Brian Cardinal free throws. Eight-point game. Shot clock under 10. They're nowhere close. Now Cunningham, off balance, got it. I'll tell you, made a tough shot right there because Indiana really tightened up defensively. Eight for Carson Cunningham. Guyton down the baseline, throws it away to Eldridge. And a nice behind-the-back maneuver and traffic. Looks up, lane open foul. That was a big stop on the other end and a conversion to Bidot. The big shot of this game thus far for Purdue was that little jumper by Carson Cunningham. They needed it so badly. That could be a big call with uh, William Gladness picking up his third. I read some great quotes by Bob Slick Leonard. 
played here in 52 to 54, won the national title in 53. He said this game was so big that Branch McCracken used to tell the players, the former coach, as he misses that free throw, if you beat Purdue, I'll give you an autographed basketball at the end of the year. His career slipped. He was 6-0. What a guard he was. That was before your time. <laughs> Slick Leonard's before your time. Yeah, I, I think it's Slick Leonard in the ABA. That's he was what Slick up. Leonard means. You, you thought about him when he was coaching the Right. And Slick, we're dating you, baby. Alan Eldridge, one of two, 51-46 in Bloomington. Lincoln Mercury in No question, the most competitive league in the country with Indiana right now uh, tied for six with Minnesota and Purdue, a surprising eight. Dick. Looking at it, four and five, and they got two road games after this. So they're really in a danger position right now. Remember this number as you look at those numbers right there. Last year, Iowa was nine and seven in the conference with 20 wins, beat Indiana twice, and they went to play in the NIT. So you never know what might happen, so you want as many wins. Gene Cady, since he's been the coach, has has more wins per year than anyone. They've averaged 12 wins a year in a Big Ten over his tenure as coach at Purdue. That's an amazing number. Jared Odell has checked in. Goes to Haston and hits a hook. Nice little post move presence right there by Haston on the inside. Strange as it sounds, Katie not considering an NCAA bid a certainty for this Boilermaker team. Greg McQuay with a miss. Haston a rebound. Here comes Guy at the open court. The looker, Wrecker, sets up the open three by Lewis, and he can't get it down. They're playing Odell and Haston together right now. Odell did the deck out of bounds. You know, Odell, Bobby Knight really apologized to the kid. It was publicized here. He said, I should have played him some minutes against Wisconsin because he flat out earned the play in time after his performance against Penn State. He was really calm today, talking about everything from horses with his buddy, Mr. Lucas, to you name it. He was talking about, in fact, I'll tell you one statement he made. We'll get to it after this foul. Committed by Odin. He said, you ready for this day? Ready. The best coach in the United States of America. Ready for it? He said, and has the best program that all of us are trying to emulate is my former West Point cadet point guard, Mike Krzyzewski. He said flat out today in front of people, he is the best coach in the United States for everything he does and for the way he has the direction of that program. And that's a strong, strong statement. Lots of people would agree with that. Great tribute, though, to the former West Pointer and Indiana assistant. Coach K, turn around in the lane by Mike Robinson. Not only a miss, but he commits the foul going after his miss. I thought he was going to be a big-time player here, Mike Robinson, a consistent player. You can give a little excuse his freshman year, getting acclimated and getting adjusted. By now, I thought he'd be able to give them a lot more point production. Look at the numbers now versus the first half, 64%, one for six, a little Brick City here in the second half. Well, you knew they'd probably come down to earth and they have come crashing. That's why they're going to have to pick it up on a defensive end as we see a turnover, and they did that right there. Gene Kenny, such a passionate guy, pours his heart out, want to send the best out to his wife. Pat is at home, not feeling a little bit under the weather. So is Bobby Knight. He's got a little bit of a flu. He told me today, I got the basketball flu. Katie's <laughs> saying uh, today he feels like if they can win one of this three-game stretch they have on the road, they go to uh, Illinois and then to Michigan State next. Sweep all their home games, win at least one in Chicago in the tournament. That would be their road to the NCAAs. He doesn't think... A certainty yet. Haston with a defensive play. Purdue will go turn it over, and he says, what about over the back? Yeah, no foul, over the back. Well, he does it with a smile. Jacket not off. The one thing that really bothers him, he said, as you see the contact, looked like an all ball there, but he wanted the over the back right there, is the fact that he felt at home they were embarrassed, and no one wants to get embarrassed on the home floor, especially in front of a great crowd that they have at Mackey. That's a beautiful arena in terms of enthusiasm. We only had a team to beat him at home this year. Ohio State Saturday, 80 to 69. Guyton, the extra pass inside for Houston. Too easy. Absolutely too easy. A little dribble penetration. They worked on that yesterday. Get into the gap and see with a little dump down. And here comes the Bloomington. People are really ready to respond. A little penetration. They worked on that yesterday, Dave. Impressive. 
Baptiste. They consistently working on penetration. Freeze it right here. See, once he gets in here, there's the help. He releases. He dumps it down, and they got a layup. There it is. There's the release. A little screen, the dump down, created by the penetration by Guyton. Alley-oop, Cameron Stevens has to go up twice and finally gets the point. After Indiana had opened up their largest lead of the game at 9, it's 55-48. Stevens starting to play better, sat out all last year, pop 48. Oh, air ball, mercy. Carson Cunningham the other way, pulls up, hits the three. I'll tell you, Cunningham gives him some offensive productivity. 16.5 a game in his last four games. Knight might be getting a little bit tired. He's done an unexpected pass. Bobby Knight's going to go to the bench, shooting the ball a little quick. Cunningham, some big shots here in the second half. Eldridge, that would have been another one, the three-pointer rebounded by Robinson. Cunningham driving one-hander. Wow. That's back in the days at number 14 with the Celtics. You don't remember him. One of my idols, Bob Cousy. I remember Bob Cousy. He's the uh, Celtics color announcer. Good locker. You were like two years old at the time he played. Oh, he played? Oh, was he a player? What a bounce pass. What a great backdoor cut. We're seeing some outstanding offense tonight. We really are. Some great cuts without the ball. Making that good cut without the ball, the count, and then a little showtime. Luke Wrecker. Wrecker, first points of the half. He has 13 for the game. Stevens committed the foul, his second. Carson Cunningham's provided a spark for them. He really has on the perimeter. He's made some tough shots. His first 16 games as a boiler dick, one game in double figures. He started the last four, averaged 16 and a half, 13 and counting in this one. Well, he had a lot of injuries earlier in the year. He was really hampered by a number of injuries. They're going to one for three at the line to keep it. A four-point margin, Purdue coming back from nine down. Just about a minute ago. One thing about Purdue kids today, GK cannot complain about their effort. They're certainly focused on playing hard. Cardinal spins and a mismatch with Rob Turner. Double clutches would have counted. And he is sick at himself that he didn't get the layup. I'll tell you one thing. If you can't get pumped up to play in this kind of environment or rivalry like this, there's something wrong with you. Cardinal trying to work on that baseline to utilize the power layup move where you square your body to the baseline. See, now he squares his body to try and get the good angle. Almost the principle of verticality where you come back into the defensive player. His dad, the trainer down in Illinois. Which is very fortunate for Brian because he has spent as much time probably as anybody in college basketball banging his body up on the floors of the big yeah, he's always scrapping and clawing. He's an old John Madden performer. I mean, diving, hustling. I'll tell you one thing about Illinois. They better beat him now. Frankie Williams gets eligible next year for Peoria. They get the kid Griffin in out of junior college. Cook the high school sensation. They can make the elevation to the big time in a big spot in that Big Ten quickly. Carson Cunningham leading Purdue back within two without the sophomore transfer from Ogden Dunes, Indiana. Carson Cunningham. Well, he loves playing in the state of Indiana. We watch Cunningham right here. He's giving him such a spark. There he is knocking down the three. He's six for seven. But he's made some big shots whenever Indiana's tried to get him on some big, big plays. And I'll tell you, they, you talk about the Big Ten. Since 1989, seven different Big Ten schools have earned a number one seed, showing you how it's so diversified in the league. I mean, Minnesota, Michigan State, Purdue, Indiana, Ohio State, Illinois, and Michigan all have had number one seeds since 1989. That is remarkable, just in the last 10 years. Can they get eight this year? I think they can. I think there's an outside shot that it can happen, except these clubs are beating each other. Might eliminate either Iowa or Purdue. Might knock themselves out. Northwestern is hanging in the air. They got a big game tomorrow with Wisconsin, but it's at Wisconsin. Good Five defense. on the shot clock. Haston, a big hook. You know, it really hurts right here. Gene Candy's kids did a solid job defensively. And then Hasty gets good post position and drops down the jump hook. Six of his ten here in the second half. He started the second half. 
and has made Bob Dyke's decision look like a good one. That one off the head of McQuay out of bounds touch last by Hastings. Purdue's going to have to really come up and find a way to contain Indiana a little bit better defensively if they're going to scrap and claw and come from behind and win this game. They just cannot rely on the offensive end. Out again off Hastings. Well, you mentioned before about seven teams. For sure, I think this year maybe eight. Last year, only five was the highest to get in. Five conferences got five in a 98. 97, two conferences got six, the Big Ten and the ACC. If it's eight, Northwestern then would make its first ever trip I, to the NCAA. I hope that happens for Evan Eschmeyer, Kevin O'Neill, and all those kids. I hope they get into the big dance. Great for Chicago. Jerron Cornell still missing in action. The Boilers scoring leader stuck at three on one of six shooting. Rob Turner can't get the roll. But you know what? A shooter's got to continue to shoot. He has not had good looks. What a great pass. What a great pass. Great look. Hartnell does a superb job of running the transition. Indiana gets a poor grade in terms of getting back defensively. Cornell and Mayfield get back. And they're going to call the reach on Jerron, his second. You're going to watch Cardinal right now. Run out now. Right here. Freeze it. Right here. See how he sneaks ahead? This defensive guy's got to be aware of him. Not aware of him. He sneaks ahead. They throw it a bounce pass. Too late in the recovery by Lewis. And there's the layup. They don't have much from Cornell, but they do have balance tonight. Cardinal points 13 each for Greg McQuaig and Carson. I tell you, they showed so much guts and heart earlier this year. They went down 18 in the second half against St. John's and came back and won a miracle three by Jerron Cornell. Michael Lewis leans in on Cunningham and connects. What a big time score in high school, but he's adjusted to the role of the quarterback. Has really improved his basketball IQ and his decision-making process. Lewis's first field goal, third point. Hoosiers, four-point lead. We're halfway gone in the second half. I think Lewis is too unselfish. I think he's got to think shot a little more. He's got a nice stroke. He's hitting 55%. That's the best I know. field goal percentage on the roster. Good, good effort right now by Indiana defensively. Really playing the ball tough. Ace and shoot. See a ball man. Eldridge for Greg McQuay. Short record of the ball. Created by dribble penetration again. That usually gets you a good shot. Ace then rewarded by Wrecker for running the floor and not kind of out. It's nice to see the big guys get out in transition. Elton Brand has done a superb job for Duke in getting out of the break. for second half. Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Dave Barnett and Dick Vitale watching a big second half performance by Kirk Haston for Indiana. The redshirt freshman has been almost unstoppable getting a second half start for Bob Knight. Hasty really earning some playing time. Now watch right here. He gets the shot rejected on him. But the great second effort. He doesn't get humiliated. He comes back and he kisses it off the glass and gets the conversion. What an unbelievable performance by him here in the second half. He's getting good post position. What a steal by Record. Record steals. Missed the reverse. Wow. Would that put the house down? I like the backflip he did on the floor after the miss. They got to get some looks for Cornell. They got to get some looks for him. Stevens looks for Cornell and rewarded Jerron Cornell for getting open on the back cut. Five points, all they've got from the scoring leader. Ten below his average. Purdue hanging close. Spin move, Guyton. Baseline was surrounded. Gladness for Haston. Missed the layup. No call. Outlet almost stolen again by record. Now Cunningham, who has shot Purdue back from nine down in the second half. What a big time performance. They're not going away, baby. Stay tuned. We got a great one here in Bloomington, Indiana. What a rivalry. Purdue and Indiana. Paul Jasper's watching. He's seen 70 of these. He's 90 years of age. Played here. One of the oldest living Hoosiers. Supreme Court judge in Indiana for years. Eldridge called for the foul here. Here's a look at Cunningham. Two more of his 15 most here in the second half. Look at that spread eagle on his jump shot. The way he kicks out his legs. The bottom line is there's only one thing that Gene Kenny loves. The way it goes down. I love that Kuka. I had yeah. that back in 
58 when I graduated high school. It's in my yearbook at East Rutherford, New Jersey. You don't believe me. I had a nice little crew cup. Now you've got the permanent crew cup. <laughs> Thanks. I got the permanent crew cup. You're right about that, my ball dome. The guy, they contained him here. They contained him so far. Made a mistake that time, left him alone, and he doesn't hit the three-pointer. So here's Purdue looking to tie or lead. We got to show patience. Eldridge, 9 at 63. Good patience right there because that's a high percentage shot right inside the foul line. Look at Jim Kenny pointing to the ground. He said, we got to get down, baby. We got to get down and get dirty and play some D. Oh, this is great. What a place to be tonight. There's no place else I'd rather be. No looker for Haston who gets the roll. 10 in the half, 14 of the game for Kirk Haston. You got to have inside presence when you want to win big games. You can't rely strictly perimeter. And right now Hastings is providing that on the interior. Oh, this place is alive. Oh, is it alive? It's Purdue and Indiana, and they don't like each other. <laughs> Cunningham going to a left hand that time. Long rebound out to Cornell. They reset inside for Cameron Stevens. Foul by Hastings. Nice entry inside, and Stevens does a good job taking it up. But he could have converted that if he went up with just a little bit more authority. They reverse the ball now right here. Freeze it. See right here. Now look at this wide open. They dump it down inside. He's got to go right to the goal, but he's a little slow and tentative. Defense rotates down, hesitates, takes it up. Doesn't really go up with authority, but did get fouled, and now goes to the line. Which has not been good news for Cameron Stevens this year. 48% free throw shooter, 0 for 1 to them. Guess that nice rotation right there. I love the Purdue team that he had back in, I guess it was 88, when he had all those kids in terms of Lewis. Remember that gang? They were really outstanding. Mitchell and Lewis and company. I really love that team. Stevens. That was a the year they got beat by Mitch Richmond, put a show on against yeah. them and shocked them. And Danny and Manning and all those kids went on to win the national title. Stevens hits both, our seventh tie with 7.06 to play at Assembly Hall. The bottom strength of the Big Ten. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing, you look at Michigan, you talk about a Dow Joneser man going up and down. They scored 34 points and got blitzed 58-34 by uh, Northwestern, Evan Eschmeyer and company. And then they come back and they play brilliantly. I believe it was Minnesota. Didn't they play brilliantly against Minnesota? Uh, and now here it is, they're challenging Ohio State on the road. Lewis Bullock. I'll tell you, he would have been even much better on Robert Tractor Trailer stayed in, stayed in school, and he should have stayed in school. He went out a big All-American year this year. Indiana, another Wolverine victim, ran away from them at Ann Arbor. Hoosiers led this by as many as nine in this second half, but Quay rising to reject Haston with nine remaining on the shot clock. Well, McQuay did a great job rotating over because it's been all hasty got the inside here in the second half. He's dominated on the interior. Now they got Cardinal playing him, so they get a little physical with him. Well, this five, four, shot clock, Guyton, three-pointer long. And this out battled by Cardinal. Indiana has missed six shots in a row, and Purdue can get its first lead since six and a half minutes remained in the first half. Well, they're trying to run some curls and some screens. There's the high-low. Cardinal, another layup. Purdue on top. It is absolutely A-plus execution. A nice curl move. That's Purdue basketball. That's Gene Candy basketball. That's the kind of basketball that wins games. For you. Good execution, ball movement, and player movement. Boilers on a 21 to 10 run, seven straight have misfired for Indiana as Wrecker missed it. All this with very little offense from Jerron Cornell. Cunningham, Cardinal, and McQuay stepping up in the absence of Cornell's usual production. They're starting to make more passes now, making that extra pass, trying to start to utilize the screen a lot better. Grounded on the baseline, so Cornell finds Greg McQuay, his first points of the half, 15 for the game. I'll tell you, the offensive efficiency has really been outstanding by Purdue here in the last five minutes. They have really had good movement, good execution, and most of all, excellent screening. Full time. Four point lead just under five and a half minutes. Well, Dave, they had a little curl move, and then they had that high low. We're going to see it right here. Freeze it right here. 
see right now now watch the post position on the inside and they're gonna dump it right to Cardinal and he's gonna get himself a layup on the inside McQuay Cardinal does an excellent job holding off right into our camera kisses it on the glass and gets the conversion Two of his 17, Indiana started so hot, especially from three, not anymore. They have done a great job containing A.J. Guyton in the second half. Look at him running at him. They're going to double him, play right in his face. They're going to make him try to drive instead of get the good look. So I would attack him, too. You can't give him that good look. Inside, it's a strip by Cardinal. He can't keep it in bounds. Gladness really struggling on the inside, scoring. What a story, as I said earlier. He's playing with a bullet on the side, a hill of bullets, and him and his friend lost his brother this year, who was shot down in West Memphis, and also the passing of his dad. It's been a tough year for William Black. What a shot by Record, who has 15. That ends the Purdue run. The lead is two, under five minutes. It's mailbox time, baby. Get out the mailbox. It's going to be a mailbox masher for the finish. Cornell, they got to lay a screen for Cornell. See, I think he's the kind of guy that all of a sudden can knock down a three for you. He's been quiet. And there he is. Picked up by Lewis. Ten to shoot for Cunningham. Lewis has done an excellent job on Cornell. Shadowing him all over. Cunningham charges. Oh, the basket. They get the charge. What a big possession there. Oh, what a big They want the basket. They want the basket. Rutgers says no goal. No goal. Look at the pain, the frustration on Gene Candy's face. Here goes Cunningham. Let's see the charge. Oh, I don't know about that charge. Rucker, is he there quick enough? I don't know about that, but he got it. That's all that counts. And look at him. He's a cheerleader as well. I don't know if he got there quick enough, but I'm not making that call. Rucker to Haston. World hits another hook shot. I think it like Kareem Abdul Jabal with a little jump hook on the baseline. Chris Lang utilizes that well in North Carolina. I look at Rutgers. I love players that play with emotion. He is pumping up this crowd. We are tied. It's four minutes and 13. One team, five and five, Indiana. Four and six, Purdue. What will give? McQuay again finds Cardinal itself. Hey, Dave, what basketball execution. Cardinal with that good post move on the interior. A season high for Brian Cardinal, 19 points. Oilers back on top. Record. This game's going to come down to whoever locks it up on a defensive end. Lewis. Oh, they want the goaltender. Go go they get the two anyway. Haston. 18 points for Kirk Haston. Wow, I thought there was goaltending there, baby. But Hasty really played superbly on the inside. Timeout by Gene Cady. We're tied. Oh, if you're Purdue, you don't want to leave here for and seven. And if you're Indiana, you don't want anybody to come into the general's house and beat you. I thought we had goaltending down there, Dave. What do you say? You got two eyes. I got one. Yeah, tough to tell. Tough to tell. Close enough, maybe, to, to give the block in the court. And there's Hasty on the glass. Well, I'll concede to you because you got two and I got one. Bob Knight quickly sat down as uh, Haston laid in two of the 14 second half points he has scored. Here, one more look. This may be a little easier to tell. It's Michael Lewis with the shot. That, Ooh, that is a probably yes, better angle to say. Yes, sir. I thought it was goaltending, but we got the luxury of a second look, and we got the luxury of the monitor, which the officials do not have. They've done a heck of a job here tonight. Rucker, Hightower, and Hillary in a very tough, tough game to call. And he's going to get it back and score. Gladness follows him up. And Hastings' deflection in the denial made that happen. Good denial defense. Oh, it's rocking and rolling here in Bloomington. John Cougar Mellencamp ready to do some dancing. He's the only guy here used to this kind of volume. Now Cornell may get on track. Seven for Cornell, 73 all. What I like about Cornell, he's not looking to force shots. He's taking a shot within the offense, and it was there, and he knocked it down. Good horizontal screening going on by Indiana. Those screens across the lane. Aston, the man for them in the second half. Guyton scored their first six points of the half, 0 for 4 since. Lewis almost stripped by Cunningham. Great job keeping the dribble alive. Yeah, he really did. Lay it on his feet. Now Guyton, shot clock winding 
down. Spins, lost control for Dubois. He forced that shot. He was trying to create something that wasn't there. In the first half, he was taking really high percentage. Good shots for him. We're down to two minutes, partner. We got ourselves a barn burner. We got a barn burner typical Purdue, Indiana. I'll be talking about this in work tomorrow. Their last regular season meeting of the century. And many of these people work together for doing Indiana fans here in the state of Indiana. Well, and since 1901, they're 175th, one of the best of that lengthy list. Showed a lot of boys offensively. Oh, there's a bad shot, but it goes. Wow. Not the shot you want in that offensive sequence. You showed boys, took some time off the clock. Managing the clock now is big. Shot selection is big. Hasten, can he stay hot? No. Cunningham with a minute and a half. Tied at 73. Gene wants him to back it out. Eldridge running the points. Got a lot of playing time. Cunningham has been big. He would love nothing to make a, make it a big shot here in the state of Indiana for Purdue. He was not recruited by his people. Went to Oregon State. And then all of a sudden played well there and got a chance to come back home. Got clock. There's a high screen. Cardinal tough shot. Oh! oh, that was close. What a tough one. That baby hanging up there. Use the ball screen. Here we go, partner. Tied 51. Ticks on the clock. Oh, this is super. 73, 73, and Purdue, if they don't pull this out, they may be haunted by the last couple of shots, both in and out, both looked in, one by Eldridge, this one by Cunningham. Look at this shot right here, Cunningham with the top shot, throws it up off the glass, it hangs and hangs and hangs. How close you are to victory or defeat, almost a little interference right there by Gladness, somebody with the net. Timeouts. Two more timeouts for Purdue, Indiana. Has three bonus in effect. Next foul both ways. Purdue the possession arrow. We have our ninth tie. We've had a dozen lead changes. Indiana had it by nine. 55-46. Cunningham led the Boilermakers to a 23-10 run. They led by four. Now the Hoosiers have forged the tie with 51.1. Hastings and Cardinal. Cardinal's got to lock up on Hastings. The problem is whenever he's screened, he's been able to get inside. So he'll give him inside. Guyton and Cornell hooked up, trying to run some curl moves with Guyton. Guyton likes the big shot, won the game against Temple, won the game against Penn State at the end. Here's Wrecker. Trying to get clear. Nice on Eldridge. Yeah, through little isolation. Lewis, driving banker, no, through Hastings' hands. It's Greg McCray with the board, 22 seconds. They got a chance to run this baby out. Take the shot or go to OT. They can either win it or go to OT. If you're going to shoot it, you want to give yourself a chance for the offensive rebound. Remember this, the most dangerous guy is the guy on the offside, Eldridge. Five seconds. He'll hit it there. He's hit it if he can. No. Rebound at the buzzer, and we're headed to OT. And we're back for the overtime in Bloomington in a moment. Stick <laughs> here at Assembly Hall. We also have overtime. Well, you know, in overtime, I'm telling you right now, Indiana is two and two. Uh, number one in Purdue, this is their first of possession. Really didn't get the ball inside at all, had a chance. Eldridge took the shot. I'm sure Gene King wishes they did. But right now, they're going to lock it up in five minutes. 20 seconds. It never really looked inside for that last shot. But they do here. And it's Cornell hitting a tough one in traffic. That was a tough shot. Taking the ball to the basket. Normally a three-point shooter. Very quiet. But the last two shots he has taken have been really good, solid shots. Drives to the goal. Good defense inside. But Recker gets a second chance in score. Luke Recker, not a good offensive Second shot. In fact, Bobby Knight wishes the kid was a little bit more aggressive on it on the offensive boards. Now Cardinal and Gladness are tangled up, and William Gladness is hit with his fourth foul. He's the only player on either team really in much foul trouble. Oh wow! Oh wow! Wow! 
Getting demonstrative. Got to be careful of a technical. You don't want to lose your cool here in this time of the game. That's the inside. Landis gets called. I mean, there's a lot of contact. You can call it either way. Great story with Landis. Going to graduate as a kid hanging around. Didn't even graduate high school. Went to junior college and made himself a student. And will get out with a degree here at Indiana. Great story. Brian Cardinal, 7 for 7 free throws. 79% for the year. Good job offensively. He struggled though defensively. Did not play really well on the inside. Hasty really dominated him on the interior. But he's done a solid job offensively. Ryan Cardinal, the best game of the year. 21 points. Cameron Stevens in to replace Greg McQuay with Purdue leading by two. Yeah, but I could hear Katie saying, yeah, you guys talk about this game. Well, let me show you film and show you what Hasty did to him. So he balanced that 21 out. All right, best offense you gave him. Yeah, right. Nice curl move. See, right now, Cardinal's got to deny the ball to Hasty, but Hasty becomes effective laying those screens. Oh, he's got to be uh -oh. careful. Tom Rucker's going to be ready to tee him up. He's got to be very careful on that sideline. I mean, Tom Rucker had the whistle, was ready. taking a big, giant step toward Bob Knight. His hands were moving toward the team the position that he held up just a play. Bobby Knight walked down the other side. Made that good move rather than coming back because a tee there would have been disaster. He knows what's at stake here. Five and five in the conference. Alan Eldridge commits his third record, misses the front end. Got to convert those free throws. They go on a road to Northwestern after this game, Indiana. See, now you got to get more moving. Some screens, execute their passing game, screen away, take a high percentage shot. Cardinal trying to post inside. Ah, not a good look. They're going to get bailed out here. No, they're going to call Cardinal for a push. I thought they were going to foul Gladness out on a bad pass instead of Cardinal with his first foul. Dave, that was a really good call as well. You watch Cardinal right here, people. Watch him down here. See, he's going to push off, but he can't get the ball. He spots it. And he's a who me? Who me? He knows he pushed off there. <laughs> So William Gladness in another one and one in Indiana. Only six of 13 at the free throw line, and they would have put this one away in regulation. And that's normally not the way they shoot free throws over the years. This year, not shooting as well as they've done in the past. 67% this year, and they have missed their last five at the line. Wow, does that hurt? Here at OT, Wrecker and Gladness come up empty. Now Purdue can really make a pay for that. Yeah, yeah, in fact, does not have a main free throw since the first half. Purdue with the turnover by Eldridge, though. What a sloppy play right there by Purdue. Uh -oh. Right, he can't uh -oh. it again, though. Follows his own Mr. Key. Nobody blocking out. We saw a record with an offensive rebound. And there was A.J. Guyton. He just floats right to the globe. Nobody blocks him out. Three minutes in overtime. Jerron Cornell's the guy out go down lay some big time screens for Cornell. They'll switch it on him, but he had a backdoor cut and they missed him. Every time he steps out off the screen, they switch. Now Guyton picks him up. Cornell picks up right at the key and hits again. That's the guy I'd go to. I would go to Mr. Cornell. He made the big one to beat St. John's. This kid wants the ball at the end of the game. And he's been taking good shots, not bad shots. Four of their six in overtime. Oilers by two, under two and a half. Back cut, Wrecker ties it again. Wide open. I'll tell you one thing, both clubs burning each other with back cuts tonight here in this game. Simple execution, lack of defensive presence to see ball and man. See, Cornell now has got to run Lewis into a screen. There's the back screen for him. And they switched on him. He wants the down screen from Cardinal. Pops out. They missed it. You got to spot that open guy and get the ball at the right time. Evans calls for double team. Almost gets anywhere. That was an impossible angle. That was an absolute impossible angle to make that shot. And he almost did. But it's Indiana's chance now to break a tie. A minute 40 in OT. Michael Lewis looks low, instead goes high for Guyton. Double clutch in the lane, it's halfway down and up. I'll tell you, what a big game, people, for both these clubs. Entertaining thoughts, they want that big bird to the NCAA. Five
five and five, four and six. If you're Purdue, you don't want to leave this house after this effort, four and seven. A big difference, five and six and four and seven. Full timeout. Not at 79 off. Well, we're going to take a look at Cornell now, trying to move it out the ball, number 22. Now watch him. He's active. He's going to come off a down screen. Now there's the screen by Cunningham. Steps out, slices through the lane, pulls up nice, under control, nails it. Then we see Wrecker right here. See, freeze it right here. Freeze it. He sets him up, goes right back door cut, and there's the layup. Bye-bye, Mr. Eldridge has not had a solid game. He's capable of playing better. I've seen him play better out. Cunningham, on the other hand, has been huge, and that one off the top of the backboard angles it. He has 17 points, and Purdue back in front as we near one minute to go in overtime. You know how special that is to a kid that wasn't recruited and always wanted to play at these schools? Wrecker answer. Nobody going to him, though, Dave. Wide open in the medium range, jump shot. But Cunningham had told me how you always wanted to play here in Indiana. Nobody wanted him. He went out to Oregon State. He gave it all. The score time. Here's the dream as a kid doing this. Almost travel. Real close. It's Eldridge, 38 seconds. 15 on the shot clock. Cornell breaks open a three-point. Oh, there's the guy, Mr. Clutch. But Indiana's got a shot. Plenty of time left. They down three. Seven for Cornell at the end of regulation. He has seven in the overtime. Got to play good perimeter three defense now. Got to lock up. Don't let Guyton get that good look at the three. They're really stepping out on him. Lewis, not quite rebound Cornell. 12 seconds to go. And now they have to foul Allen Eldridge with 10.6 seconds to go. But Allen can lock this up. Make a free throw here, and it's really going to be tough. It'll be a two-possession game. Boy, the faces of the Hoosiers registering total frustration. Well, Let you know, they, get away. they dominated the game. Absolutely dominated. Robert Knight, something. Patrick Knight, assistant coach now. Dad really singing his praises today. This is certainly big right here. Ball game. Ball game. Unless a miracle happens. A lot of time with 10.6, but four is going to be tough to overcome unless you really play unintelligent basketball. This could be a jubilant ride back to West Lafayette for Gene Candy's kids. It has not been a great game for Alan Eldridge, but no, those are the two that should have put it away. 86-81, Lewis in and out on a prayer. Down to two seconds, Cardinal steals it, Purdue wins it. They avoid the sweep, and they win on Bob Knight's home floor, 86-81 in overtime. I'll tell you, we could have eight teams out of the Big Ten. This makes it a...